Hello there. This is the first of three tutorials that takes a look at patching techniques for um, doing rig removal work for visual effects. So we're going to take something out that shouldn't be there um, and use this shot to demonstrate three different flavors of patching really. So take a look at this shot. So this is um, this is meant to be, the story is uh, 1912 and steam trains all good but not so good is this modern day van that's just driving along that top road so we've got to take that out so um, this is a good foundation for skills that a prep artist needs so it's always good to get your head around patching and then that leads you on to further paint techniques a bit later on so um, if you have a look so it's a locked off shot but there's grain to deal with so that's one issue that always is apparent with patching work <clears throat> and there's a little bit of gate weave as well as this is film when it's transferred or scanned into a computer you see the movement of the frames as they've run through the gate and it just you can see it just sliding around a little bit there look compare against the edge it's a little bit mostly vertical movement so we're not going to get as far as dealing with that, that will be dealt with with tracking, but we're going to do everything else in these tutorials. So let's get going. So um, we're going to look first at live patching, and that's really where the simplest, and um, it's good when you've got a decent amount of live um, piece of, of plate that you can move in to cover the offending object. So moving it left, moving it up, moving it right, moving it down is the kind of thing that you're wanting to do. So with this what my intention is is to just nick a piece of land of sort of hill and then move it to fill a hole that I'm going to make. So the hole that you make in Nuke is done with roto and you draw a roto for the thing that you're trying to remove so always draw for the offending object. Um, there's issues around where you put the mat lines in cleanup work or patching work and that's always to try to get them to sit on natural edges so that you can kind of hide them a bit in the shot. Um, the thing that you try and, try and avoid is to have them moving, have them animating because then, it, then it's easy for them to spot. You usually see a crawling line on the big screen so um, I'm going to put my rotor in and have a look. So first thing in Nuke is that if you have roto that's not attached to a picture um, it doesn't pick up a format so it looks for its format, literally its size, in the project settings down here. So you just need to check that they're correct. Press S on the keyboard. Let's stop this a sec. Press S on the keyboard and just have a look at what they're set to. Um, we just need to make sure that it's 1024 by 576 for this, that's widescreen standard definition size, rather than 2K. If you don't check this, your roto will always be 2K size, because that's Nuke's default, and, and that's too big for things like this, so always good to check. So now that's fine, um, and I'm just going to see how much area I need to draw for. So always good to kind of plan a little bit about looking initially and trying to decide what bits you need, what ingredients you need and for things like rotor how much you need to draw so I'm going to start the drawing just back there because you can see the top of the van and it finishes just before this tree here so back it up um, and then just um, make sure I'm seeing the tools by double clicking and I'm just going to use Bezier to draw a shape something like that and just see that that's big enough Should be fine. That looks that looks okay. 
So I'll just work with that for now. I can always adjust it afterwards and maybe add some feathering. These are the done things, but you know I can do those um, a, a little bit later. So I'm just going to wire this in and plug it up so that it's it's being used. So what am I trying to do here? Well, um, it's just ta literally taking the plate itself to begin with, and then I'm going to, like I suggested, shift this bit of hill here, kind of down, um, to be the the thing that's that's going to actually be seen within this this mat or alpha channel that's that's drawn created with this roto so I need a transform and I'll just sit that transform off to the right there make this a bit bigger so you can see um, and then your control jack is better to move it so it's just close to where you're wanting to work so um, Command control lets you move this pivot point, which is literally the control jack on screen in Nuke. And then I'm just gonna kind of do that. Sometimes the way that Nuke overlays the picture um, isn't ideal in that it doesn't show you both the uh, the two plates together. It always jumps to the thing that you're moving and shows you only that. Um, but allowing for that. Well, we'll just shift it like that and then wire all this up and then we can always come back and make the fine adjustments afterwards. So that's what I would do. I'm putting an alpha channel directly on top. I could use a copy to copy the alpha channel in. But for Roto, I'd certainly do that if I was keying. But for Roto, where I'm just drawing a mat, I'd just put that directly on top of the colours here. It's easy enough just to nuke lets me do that. So that's fine. Um, one thing here is interesting, um, because Transform makes a solid alpha itself, which is that image there, that's the actual whole frame that's an alpha channel. This Transform's made it look, if I toggle it off you'll see that that's made this solid alpha. So the Roto by default won't overwrite that until I press this replace key. Um, if you've got no alpha coming in, which is most of the time I guess in Nuke, that this is just black, then you don't need this. The Roto just draws directly into the alpha, chan alpha channel of the stream if you like. It, it just adds to, the, uh, to these colour channels. Um, because this transforms made an alpha signal then in the roto I have to hit replace it's a bit of a gotcha that because you kind of forget that that needs to happen look so that literally repa replaces the roto that I've drawn for the the one that the transform would put in above so there yeah, that works so customary to put then a pre molt in to do the cutting out And then all you're doing is you're merging that front over back with a merge over. A is the front, B is the back. So hook it up like that. And you'll see that this will kind of work. It just needs a little bit of uh, comp love. So if you're trying to rotate, you can press shift and it um, that stops it constraining, it gives you kind of free rotation. Um, the further your cursor is away from the pivot point, the more gentler, precise control you have. So. so getting something like that. So what I'd probably do is just edit the rotor shape a bit to make it sit in a bit more naturally. though because you see the bottom um, the bottom of the van just just be careful with this in nuke if you've edited your rotor on another place literally another frame it gives you a keyframe so the rotor shape is the the only 
type of animation that's automatically keyframing without you telling it. Everything else you have to go to the animation menu and say set key and then, then it's keyframing. Not with Roto though. So what that means is you kind of get rogue keyframes where you don't really want them. Um, everybody forgets and everybody just does their edits on different frames so it's not it's not just you or it's not just me. Um, so I'm just going to get rid. So go here. Um, you can delete key or just as easy and sort of assure, assured really to go no animation and make sure it's curve all. And then if you're yeah, you can be sure that your things, um, your mask doesn't move. So there we are. Um, so I'd say it's getting there. So always good to feather a little bit in these circumstances where it doesn't quite sit sit in there. So um, I would do that globally. I'd do feathering to the whole thing. So smooth zero gives you a better type of fall off on the edge and then you just lift the uh, the slider up there you can see it taking effects on the image look um, and the alpha channel sometimes nuke gives you corners you see corners on the on the feathering so what most people do is just put a blur in to soften just the alpha channel look so you have to remember on the blur to just say alpha so you can do that just to give it that bit of extra fall off nice kind of soft fall off that you get but make sure your blur is just affecting the alpha channel rather than the colors as well so take it off RGBA put it on just just alpha and then it's only affecting the alpha signal so um, that's it that kind of works. I mean it's nice and quick it feels a bit like a hack this but you know if it works it's um, go with it always do the easiest thing first. Um, I, I guess generally the the issues are if if you've got enough um, of um, a piece of clean plate you know in order to to move it in without anything going with any quick movement going on top of it or the camera moving around so we're, we're lucky with this. Um, and the good thing is um, that the grain is matched. So without having to take the grain off and then rematch the grain, because this is actually live footage that's been shifted, it is literally a live patch, then we've got the grain intact. So we like that. Okay, so that's it nice and simple so that's your first one that's live patching alright so there we go job done